Do my video best. Right I am, and it's really nice because this overhead view means you can't get in my shot very easily. <laughs> you better leave that in there. I will. I'll leave it in. Where'd you get that thing? This? Yeah. I bought it for myself uh, with graduation money. I wanted to get an overhead because my camera is obnoxious to set up overhead. Hey guys, it's Autumn here and welcome back to our Painting People from Pinterest series. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little clip in the beginning there. That was just a little bit of banter between my dad and I uh, earlier in the day when I was working on this painting. Uh, he came in to talk to me while I was painting and uh, he asked me to leave that part in as you heard so I left it in the final cut of the video. So today I'm going to be talking about my process for painting these pieces. Um, you'll notice in the bottom right corner that you can see my mixing tray or my well my watercolor tin and my mixing tray and I'm mixing the skin tone. So I usually mix my skin tone first because it causes me a lot of issues if I don't mix it right the first time. So I try to mix that out and then once that's mixed I'll go in with a very desaturated red and layer down a very pale pink red over top of the cheeks, the nose, and the ears. Um, if they're wearing a lower cut shirt I'll also include um, a little bit of red there and on the fingertips and the knuckles because your knuckles do tend to be quite a bit more red although I suppose when her hand when your hand is bent as her hand is bent it would be more white because of the tension uh, between the bone and the mu and the skin but I did that anyways but your fingertips are red because that's where your blood will pool so I kept that in so she looks like she's blushing profusely at the moment, but uh, I lighten that up with the paper towel as you can see, and I think I had a bit more, although maybe not. Could be mistaken with this one. Um, I then will go over top of this red highlighting after I take off or put down more paint, depending on what I feel is necessary for the areas, and glaze over it with um, the skin tone. I usually mix a peachy skin tone or um, just something very pale because I myself am a pale person so I tend to find those skin tones a bit easier to mix. Um, I can mix like more of a tan skin tone but I don't really paint people of color very often when I paint them. So uh, after I finish her skin tone I believe I go in and start on her hair. Um, oh no, I do her eyes first, I think, actually. I go in with the turquoise from Grumbacher and put those in for the eye color. Uh, I also go back and I lighten her hand because I found the color was a little bit too splotchy for what I wanted. And there I am going in with that turquoise blue color from Grumbacher. Um, I always find it's very hard to capture the precise color on camera, but it's okay. Um, I then go and I work on her lips. I do a bottom line for her bottom lip and I just fill in the top lip because your top lip is usually hidden in shadow. I then go in and start painting her hair. I started off with more of a blonde color but I didn't like the way it looked with her eyes so I instead went in with this dark brown. Uh, I have to layer this quite a bit in order to achieve a smooth tone because it's more of a student quality art supply but it doesn't actually turn out that poorly. The left side of her face, I have a more difficult time uh, layering the color though, as I think I had a little bit too much water on that side. Um, I then go in and do the sides of her hair, where her hair would have been pulled up, and begin to outline some of the more basic features on her face, and then fill in her lower lip and put another layer of red over her top lip. Then I started filling in her sweater with this deep purple. Um, it's a very cool toned purple, it's one of my favorites actually. And I chose to do this lighter tone so it plays off of the darkness of her hair. So the light sweater is uh, supposed to complement the dark hair and kind of balance it because her skin is also this very light tone. Um, 
Um, it also helps with the eyes because the eyes are really light so that they are even. And then go in and I fill in her shirt with a very, 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 very light wash of Payne's Gray and then do the smiley face on her sweater with a yellow. Um, I go in and add a bit of shading onto her undershirt and I add shadows to her face and under her neck and by her fingers. Um, I believe I then go in and start outlining her eyes and then I start outlining the rest of her face as the shirt is almost dry. And I add the very black X on the shirts for to finish the design that I was going for, which is the like the X I smiley face with the sticking out tongue kind of thing. I outlined her shirt in a deep purple and I outlined her eyes in black to cause them to pop a bit more. Uh, her face is outlined in brown because it is much warmer and it isn't as deep of a tone, so her eyes don't get lost in the other dark tones. I outline her hand and then I give her some freckles. Um, I did this because the original model for this painting had freckles all over, so I decided to go with that. I then finish it off by outlining her shirt and her collar with Payne's gray and giving some more shadows under her hand and her arm. So that's all I have to say about this piece. So my process is usually just laying down flat tones and then going over with some shading. Um, the background, by the way, is quinacridone gold, one of my most favorite paint colors that I own. And I wanted to frame her head in a warmer tone so it balances with the yellow in her shirt. That's about all I have to say for this video, and I will see you guys next time for another video. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to check out another one over there, and if you want to see the full playlist for this series, check out over here. Thank you for watching, and subscribe if you like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone!